All right, in this example, I want to do a mass spring damper system. So same thing as we were doing before, I'm going to do a free body diagram, get the equations in motion, and if I have time, I might solve the differential equation. The problem is that we don't have parameters here, so it's second order, but we might go through the motions. So let's do a free body diagram first. So this is M. You've got a, a force input here. You're going to have, if you move it to the right, you're going to have a spring force here, and you're going to have a damping force here. This is a damper and this is a spring. This is Hooke's law, and then I guess that's like a derivative of Hooke's law there. Um, keep in mind that the transfer function we're trying to get, or the relationship we're trying to get, is F is the input, G is the plant, and then X is the output. So we're trying to find the position of the, of the mass as a, as a function of the input there. The free body diagram is done, so now we can use um, Newton's second law. So we'll do sum of the forces is mass times acceleration. In this case, in this case, all of the forces are these three forces here from our free body diagram. So F minus KX minus CX dot is M. And then the acceleration there is the second derivative position. So it's X double dot there. Okay? And then all we have to do is put all the X's on one side and then F on the right hand side. And we'll get MX double dot plus CX dot plus KX equals F. And there you go. That's pretty much all there is to it. Those are the uh, equations of motion there. So that's really quick. So uh, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to just keep going. So let's assume we're trying to find the uh, homogeneous and particular solution. So the uh, homogeneous solution is going to be where we set the forcing function to zero. So we're going to have MX double dot CX dot plus KX equals zero. And remember, we're going to say the homogeneous solution is A, B to the ST. We're going to take a first derivative, and we're going to get AS, E to the ST, and then X double dot H, T is going to give us AS squared, E to the ST. I'm going to take those three functions and plug it back into the uh, variable above, and I'm going to get MS squared plus CS plus K, all times a e to the st equals zero. And the reason why I did it that way is because I factored out the like terms and I plugged in. Remember, you can have three solutions. A can be zero, which gives us the trivial solution of x equals zero, which I don't like. I'm going to put a unhappy face there. Uh, you can have e to the st equals zero, which is impossible. Um, give me one second here. Um, let's see. Close this out. Okay, there we go. All right, um, this, this is impossible. You can't have an exponential equal zero. So then the only other option is for ms squared plus cs plus k to equal zero. And this is a very important, important equation. This is your um, characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. And the solution is found using the quadratic formula, negative b. Um, plus or minus square root b squared plus or minus 4ac all over 2a. And these are your two roots. That's the quadratic formula. So you have two roots. So in the first order problem that I posted a couple days ago. Daddy, I don't want to do it. Hey, Lou. Oh, OK. Uh, I guess I'm just going to cut it. OK, so this is going to give you two roots. So you're going to have two different solutions here. So you're going to have one, which is negative c plus and one which is negative c minus, and then all this. Depending on your values of mc and k, you might have like critically damped or over damped or under damped. I'll, do, I'll talk about that in another, another video. But basically, your homogeneous solution is going to be um, two solutions. So it's going to be like a1 e to the s1t plus a2 e to the s2t. And let me make sure my t's look like t's and my pluses look like pluses. And so that's your homogeneous solution there. Then your particular solution is going to come in when you have a forcing function. So that kind of depends. I mean, do you have a forcing function that's sinusoidal? Do you have a constant input? Do you have, you also need initial conditions, right? So you're going to need, you know, x0 equals x0 and x dot 0 equals x dot 0. Okay? And so for the particular solution, you're going to need to find out what f is and then get a form of that. And then for the, um, a1 and A2 variables in here, you're going to need to figure out what, plug in your initial conditions and go from there. There are so many different edge cases that I'm just going to stop here because 
I personally don't like solving these using differential equations. I think the, the purpose of this video is really free body diagram, um, Newton's second law equations of motion. And then I did a little bit just to get the uh, characteristic equation. And I'll post more videos later on to kind of highlight how this works. But again, remember what we're looking for in controls is this transform function, which is x over output over input is g. And again, I keep alluding to it, but we're going to do Laplace transforms to get us that relationship there, which I'll show in a separate video. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.